So this is not a report of something that happened. This is an attempt to predict the weather in the future. If we look at the forecast area, so here's just an example of somebody going on a flight from East Texas Regional Airport up to the Dallas area, up to McKinney Airport. And how much of this airport, how much of this flight is actually covered by the TAF? Well, very little actually. We've been talking about how to not rely on only TAFs and METARs. It's a very small picture view. We want the big picture view. We're gonna talk more in future classes about how to get more about weather in between airports on the en route area. But for the purposes of a TAF, we're only going to focus on the area immediately around the airport because that's what the meteorologists are intending to cover when they issue a TAF. Okay, so TAF stands for Terminal Aerodrome Forecast. And this forecast area for our Terminal Aerodrome Forecast is five miles radius. So if we take a look just at one example of Google Earth at East Tex Regional Airport, here it is five mile circle drawn around the airport. So you can see that it is this area right here. It actually doesn't even get all the way up to where um, Letourneau's main campus is situated. If I look at my Google map here, that means vicinity. You need to know that the primary area is five and vicinity would be five to 10 statute miles. So that's the area that they're intending to forecast about. The times of the day that they issue this. Um, an easy way to remember the times is just think about 12 and six, okay? So basically this 0000 UTC, these are in UTC, they are issued so at 12 midnight, at 6 a.m., at 12 noon, and at 6 p.m. So we have two that are coming into us at 6, and then we have another two that are coming into us at 12 UTC. These are the, these are the starting periods. Typically, the TAF is actually released 20 to 40, maybe 15 minutes prior to its valid period. There's two valid periods that they are issued for. First off, we have a 24 hour. The vast majority of TAFs are issued with the 24 hour valid period. Meaning if my TAF is issued here at noontime, we have a valid period. If it's a 24 hour TAF, it's good until 12 the next day. So 24 hours later, it's still good to 12 noon. Okay, for a 30 hour TAF, these are often issued at international airports. So you will find them at places like Los Angeles, JFK. The reason is because we have international flights coming from much farther away. We may have a 15 hour flight coming in. They would like a longer outlook of what is going on with the weather at their airport. So you find these generally at international airports with long haul flight arrivals. These are the 30 hour TAFs. Not to worry to know which one it is because I'll show you how it's listed right in the TAF itself. Then we have amended. So sometimes we get an amended TAF. I have seen these before. If they have issued a forecast and there is something that has changed about it, it's changing maybe, and it's, let's say it's 0300 and something is totally messed up, it's way between the next valid time when they're going to issue the next TAF, so they may issue an amendment to the TAF. Be aware, be wary, if something is happening to cause a lot of amendments, hmm, I'm going to be looking closer at that weather because the weather isn't doing what they are forecasting enough that they've got to issue an amendment. Then the last thing we sometimes see more rarely is corrections. So that's not that the forecast was having a problem or it was incorrect. It is that they had an error. Ha, ah, spot the error right there, right? So they had some kind of typo in the TAF when they issued it. So watch out for those. Generally, the reason we've been emphasizing you to learn the coding on the METARs, all these different weather phenomenon, because we use it on a TAF too. We also use it on a PIREP. You just got finished looking at those. So coding is generally the same as a METAR. 
variable winds are going to be called if the wind is going to vary in direction by 30 degrees or more. So sometimes we see variable, that's when they aren't sure about the wind direction, it's 30 degrees or more with variability. Like a METAR, this is typed weather, so our wind direction is in true. So remember that again, typed weather is true, just like on a METAR. Sometimes we see this line in the tap, that means that there's just not anything significant to say. So we're going to tell you no significant weather. That means we didn't just forget to say something. It means we specifically are saying there's no significant weather happening. And finally, the visibility. So it's not coded in the United States if the visibility is forecast to be greater than six statute miles. But how they do it, like so many other things that we've been looking at, is we put a big old P in front of it and we say it's plus or P six statute miles. So visibility of greater than six will be coded as P six SM. That just means it's going to be something greater than six. Doesn't mean it's going to be 10, eight, whatever. It's just something greater than six. Wind shear. This is forecast in the TAF, but it is only applies if it, we have non-convective wind shear activity. If we have convection, so thunderstorms, that's going to automatically imply wind shear. So we're not going to have a separate wind shear forecast to talk about it if we have thunderstorms in the area. But wind shear is forecast on non-convective type wind shear activity. It's only forecast up to 2,000 feet above the ground. And what they're going to include in the wind shear part of our forecast are three things. An altitude, the direction, and the speed. Oof, we're getting crazy lines today. So here's an example of a wind shear coding. So what this is telling me, and let's break it down. We have wind shear. It's happening from the surface. They're forecasting it, I should say. It's not necessarily happening. They are forecasting this from the surface to 1,500 feet AGL. And what we are seeing is the wind is going to be changing in that period to winds from 220 degrees true at 30 knots. Okay, now I don't have the rest of this TAF to tell you what the wind was at the surface, but I'm guessing it's something a lot different because otherwise we're not going to code this. So basically we're looking at times where the wind is changing a lot in speed or direction. This is going to be coded as long as it's within 2,000 feet of the ground. They're going to show that in the tap if that's what they are forecasting to be happening.